Helldivers 2 is a ton of fun. Yes, I finally dove into Helldivers this weekend, and partly because many of you have been saying, Clayton, you got to check out Helldivers. Many of you in the comments, you got to check out Helldivers 2. But also because, well, I've been playing a lot of big open world RPGs like Xenoblade Chronicles, just finished up uh, Easebooks 1 and 2, and I needed a little bit of a break. And I just wanted to do something kind of mindless <laughs> and fun. And I wanted to try the online experience for the first time. I'm not an online gamer. I don't really play, really have never played any uh, online games except for Armored Core 6 uh, with a friend. That's the only online experience I've really ever have. Usually I choose the story mode in a Call of Duty game. That's what I want to play. And so this game forces you to jump in and play with other people, play with friends, pay with, play with total randos on the internet and have a lot of fun with it. So let's talk about this game. All right, so Grover and I are out taking a walk. Let's talk about Helldivers 2 a little bit here and give you my first impressions having played a few hours this weekend. I said right at the beginning, this game is a ton of fun. It absolutely is. It's laugh out loud funny and that's exactly what I wanted from this game. It's a game that does not take itself too seriously at all. It's very tongue in cheek. It reminds me if if like Condoleezza Rice and Dick Cheney and uh, Nikki Haley all got together and created a video game where you would go and want to spread, spread democracy around the universe with bullets and bombs, because you know that's what neocons love, that's what this game, that's what this game does. You immediately start out as a cadet and you're hearing this voiceover from a famous hell diver. It's like, welcome cadet, you're the most important new recruit we've ever had. Hell diver training is the toughest test in the galaxy. Then, we're gonna take you through this important mission training sequence so you can go and spread democracy around the universe. And it's very much about you know, spreading democracy with the use of bombs and destroying things and expansionism and colonialism and, and all of that. And it's done in such a tongue in cheek way that it's very, very funny. In many ways, it's like if Monty Python had, uh, had involved themselves in making a video game. So very, very funny. It also makes you feel like you're the most important recruit they've ever had, like right out of the gate. You are one of the most important people we've ever had here at Helldivers Training. You're gonna go out there and spread democracy and, and life is so important. Your mission is so critical. Liberty, democracy, justice. They're in your hands now. And you realize right away that they're I guess, I guess, I guess gaslighting you because you go through different parts of the early training sequences and you have friends They're like, you're going to be partnering up with individuals and that partner is one of the most important people in your life. And then suddenly, just as he's talking about it, boom, your, your partner gets killed. And then it, the voiceover guy says, you know, that's going to happen all the time. Death is inevitable. And you're like, oh, okay. So then I'm not that important. I'm just a commodity to you as a, as a soldier. And that makes it even funnier. So. You know, the conceit of the game, of course, is that you are a hell diver. You have to go and spread democracy and save Super Earth, which is this just massive expansion of humanity across the universe. And I have to say, one really interesting thing that I loved about the game is that you are involved in the planning and expansion of humanity. So you walk up to this war table after your training sequence, and you go to the, the main war table, and you can see all of the current battles that are taking place uh, around the solar system and the universe right now. And these are like live battles happening right now with people playing the game all over the world. And you can see percentages like humanity pushing back against the bad guys, you know, the evil monsters and bugs and, and all of these things, uh, like Starship Trooper style. And you get to choose which planet or mission you want to be a part of. Choose this planet. Right now, it's about 30% humans versus 70% bad guys. Maybe I can affect change on that planet. And it shows you a percentage of this. So you can choose that planet and then jump down and start battling. And what's amazing is you're contributing to the percentage. If you win, your mission is successful, that planet will eventually be fully colonized. It'll be fully taken over and you are responsible for that in part. So it's not just a blind sort of live service game with no consequences, right? It's uh, in many ways, you're, you're really a part of the narrative structure of the game, which is kind of fun. Because again, there is no single player story mode in this game. And so for me, you know, I'm not used to playing online with other individuals. I'm used to just playing story modes uh, in games. So in that way, you feel like in some ways this is a bit of a story mode within the context of an online service game. But of course, none of that would matter if the combat wasn't fun 
and all of the things that you get to do with your guns and grenades and calling in additional support and supplies was, was not fun. It is. And the sound effects are spot on fantastic while you're using your guns and throwing grenades and shooting bugs that are exploding in some really fantastical ways. There's friendly fire. So I got killed by a guy that I teamed up with. Uh, friendly fire is like always turned on. So you're going to kill your teammates. This game is like all about death. You are going to be killed regularly in this game, even when you call in backup supplies. So there's always this orbital thing floating around above you. You can call in supplies. If you need to bring in extra ammunition or extra medical supplies, you just punch in on your D-pad, um, almost like Contra style, like up, down, up, down, left, right, left, right, A, B, select, start, or whatever. And you then throw a little ball into the field to put a, put a marker where you want these resupplies to join you and they, they, they rock it down to earth and inevitably you're gonna end up killing some of your teammates when you call in supply runs because this like rocket comes down and destroys. It's just hilarious. It's very, very funny. So right out of the gate, I was teamed up. I was a single level cadet. I was teamed up with a sixth level cadet playing online with a guy uh, and he was very gracious because I had no experience. So we jumped into this mission and right away I got killed. And then he called in reinforcements for me to come back to life, so he revived me. And then a few minutes later, I was killed again. And each of these missions are like maybe 10 minutes long. They're not very long at all. And uh, so I died twice. And then he killed me a third time. So I died like three times in this one mission, but he was very gracious, brought me back to life. And then once you call the shuttle to remove you from the battle after you've completed your mission, it gives you a countdown timer. The extraction point is over there and you've got two minutes until your shuttlecraft comes down to save you. So in that two minutes, you're sitting there fending off bad guys and monsters and giant bugs that are trying to attack you and it's anxiety you know causing and it's it's just a, an absolute blast it really is a, a lot of fun um, yeah I, I, I can say that I I can recommend this game highly so my son went through the training and then we were playing simultaneously to really enjoy this game I know there's been a lot of criticism about the servers that they were just overwhelmed when Sony launched this game I don't think that they expected the success of this game to be what it was so you had over 500,000 people like trying to play simultaneously and it just got destroyed the servers just got destroyed I have not had any trouble with the servers at all so maybe this weekend that I'm playing on the 24th of February 2024 right now they've gotten some extra servers online to be able to handle all of this additional capacity so I was playing it on a weekend which is when people are home and off work so uh, I didn't have any problems with that I will say I would love for there to be a single story mode on in this game I think it's ripe for that there is no single story mode uh, as far as uh, as far as I know unless I'm totally missing it <laughs> there is there is nothing like that I think this game would be great with a DLC there'd be a great uh, single story mode I also think it's it could be bigger um, there's not a lot of supply drops. There's like a list of supply drops that you can get from your orbital. I've already seen a lot of those. Um, there's not a lot of variations. I know it's early days, so I think they could expand this game a lot. It'll be interesting to see how many people are still playing this game, you know, in a, in a few months. Um, but it's a lot of fun. You want to just quickly jump into a mission, play for 15 to 20 minutes with somebody online or your friends. Hey, let's go do a few missions or whatever and call it a night get to hang out with your friends and shoot some bugs starship trooper style it's a ton of fun so yes it's exactly what I wanted from this type of game again I'm playing all these big open world RPGs right now and so uh, to not have this big narrative structure and just blast some bugs with my son what more could you want it's a, it's a lot of fun anyway I'd love to hear your thoughts on Helldivers 2 are you playing it uh, maybe leave some tips and strategies uh, down in the comments below to help me become a better Helldiver because uh, right now I'm not that good I'm not that good, but I'll get better. I'll get better. And we'll see you next time, everyone.